Amen. We are reading today from Exodus chapter 34, verses 10 through 27. He said, I hereby make a covenant before all of your people I will perform marvels such as have not been performed in all of the earth or in any nation. And all the people among whom you live shall see the work of the Lord, for it is an awesome thing that I will do with you. I observe what I command you today. See, I will drive out before you the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. Take care not to make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land to which you are going, or it will become a snare for you. You shall tear down their altars, break their pillars, and cut down their sacred poles. For you shall worship no other God, because the Lord your God whose name is Jealous, is a jealous God. You shall not make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, for when they prostitute themselves to their gods and sacrifice to their gods, someone among them will invite you, and you will eat of the sacrifice, and you will take wives from among their daughters, from your sons and their daughters, who prostitute themselves to their gods will make your sons also prostitute to their gods. You shall not make cast idols. You shall keep the festival of unleavened bread. Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread as I commanded you at the time appointed in the month of Abib. For in the month of Abib you came out from Egypt. All that first opens the womb is mine. All your male livestock, the firstborn of cow and sheep, the firstborn of a donkey you shall redeem with a lamb, or if you will not redeem, if you shall break its neck. All the firstborn of your sons you shall redeem. No one shall appear before me empty-handed. Six days you shall work, but on the seventh day you shall rest. Even in plowing time and in harvest time, you shall rest. You shall observe the festival of weeks, the first fruit of wheat harvest, and the festival of ingathering at the turn of the year. Three times in the year, all your males shall appear before the Lord your God, the God of Israel. For I will cast out nations before you and enlarge your borders. No one shall covet your land when you go up to appear before your Lord, your God, three times in the year. You shall not offer the blood of my sacrifice with leaven, and the sacrifice of the festival of the Passover shall not be left until morning. The best of the first fruit of your ground you shall bring to the house of the Lord, your God. The Lord said to Moses, write these words. In accordance with these words, I have made a covenant with you and with Israel. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of God's word. Let us pray. Dear Lord, you do gather us in. You gather us from different spaces and odd roads and odd ideologies and thoughts and ways of perceiving. You gather us here. You have gathered us here today. Expand the reach of our understanding. Expand the reach of our hand. Expand the reach of our love. Illuminate your word to us this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Now I know my Bible study goers are like, that's not in the lectionary. 
I need to have my folks that are following the lectionary. I wanted to hang out with the Israelites a little while longer, but this is our last Sunday. We have been on a journey for a while, and so I thought, well, it's the last Sunday in October. Let's deviate just a little bit. The sermonic theme for today is the other commandments, the other commandments, a God of relationship, a God of relationship. A seasoned uh, sociology professor is walking her two large dogs one day when she hears three teenage girls talking. She teaches at a local university and has invested an entire career in molding and shaping young people. She has been an advisor and she has sat on committees at her university and she loves this space of learning and molding and listening to where her students are on their journey. So it was particularly disturbing to her on this day as she was walking her two large dogs to listen to these three teenage girls talking. She wasn't trying to hear them, but they were loud. She wasn't trying to eavesdrop, but she couldn't miss the potency of their words. And they were using a lot of profanity. And I just want you to use your sanctified imagination word after word, sentence after sentence. And when they saw her walking with the two large dogs, they let it rip in terms of how they described these two large dogs. In all fairness, I've seen the dogs and the dogs are pretty big, <laughs> but they used a few other kind of words to describe these two large prowess dogs. As a professor and someone who had gained a lot of miles on molding and shaping young minds, this professor felt no inhibition at all to check the, two, the three girls that were on the playground. She was simply speaking to them as she would any student in her class. And can you imagine what they might have said back to her? Needless to say, the professor left that street on that day even more distraught. She was so distraught that by the time she got to a meeting that I was attending, this thing was heavy on her mind. I want to share with you all today that relationships are powerful. With the presence of relationships, we develop bonds, we develop trust, we develop concern for each other. It is in the course of relationship that we look out for one another and we notice when something doesn't quite seem right about someone, they don't look their usual self. Relationships cause us to want to celebrate with others their successes when things are going good, their accomplishments, but we also lament with people when they're going through or they've experienced a loss. The joys and concerns in our service is a part of that relationship where we take time we take time to hear one another, to listen to one another, to hear the highs and lows of each other's lives and journeys, and to pray and care for each other. Within the context of a relationship, there's a whole lot that can be said, especially when we believe that the other person has our best interests. Relationships make us feel an obligation to be there for others in our lives, especially when those same individuals have been there so many times for us. Relationships let us know that someone in the world has got our back and vice versa, we've got their back as well. Relationships connect to us and they let us know that we are not alone in the world. One of the strengths of United is that there are so many good and solid relationships that exist among us, among you all. During COVID, I think one of the strengths has been that we have had some good, solid relationships to help sustain us. In the biblical text today, and all summer, we have been lingering around with the Israelites and their relationship with their God. In anger, the first set of commandments, remember we talked about, about earlier this month, the first Sunday in October, were literally broken because of course the commandments were written on a tablet. Today in the text, God is renewing those broken commandments. 
It's renewing that tablet. A covenant was an agreement between two parties or more. The Latin word means to come together to agree. This covenant was an agreement between God and the Israelites. The importance of covenant can be seen in the fact that some form of this word exists 555 times in the Bible. Some scholars argue that these commandments are a separate set of commandments and they come from a totally different source, while others say they are connected. But what is more agreeable among scholars is that God took seriously God's relationship with the Israelites. And it is out of that relationship that God had certain expectations of and made certain promises to the Israelites. We have a, a podcast here, and every couple of weeks we release a new podcast. And this week we will be re releasing on Wednesday, get your popcorn ready, we have a Boy Scout leader that will be coming before you all on Wednesday. He's going to appeal to you all to buy some popcorn, because popcorn is what the Boy Scouts raise as a fundraiser. I bought two cans of it already myself, so I've already been taken. But one of our kids, Ajani, has joined the Boy Scouts. I believe many of you will buy some popcorn too, or so I hope. <laughs> and I'm sure that you have bought a whole lot of other things from fundraisers, like Girl Scout cookies, or cheesecakes, or candy bars. And I'm sure you didn't buy it because you just couldn't go without another cheesecake or another candy bar. But you bought it because you wanted to affirm and encourage our young people. You bought it out of the covenantal relationship we have. You bought it out of when we do baptisms in this church. We make a serious commitment of covenant to each other. So we don't buy it because we need it. I know some of you got a sweet tooth. We buy it because of relationships. We buy it to support our young people. We invest in them in this kind of way. We're talking about the power and the importance of covenantal relationship. There's a lady in Peoria, and her kidneys were a challenge. For years, she struggled with her kidneys, and recently, her doctor said, it really is looking quite dismal. Without hesitation, her niece stepped up and said, Auntie, you can have my kidney. And right dead smack in the throes of COVID, they went in for a surgery, and the aunt is doing drastically better with a kidney. The niece is not doing as well, having given up her kidney. But if asked, would she do it again? Without a doubt, she would do it again. She would most certainly do it because that's her aunt. That's her people. Relationships keep us connected, and we rise out of a sense of commitment and love and obligation to do the right thing. Every year in this season is upon us again, we ask our members to make a financial commitment way over into 2021. We stay afloat because of the financial dollars that you give to United. During the the, during this COVID pandemic, you guys have showed up and you have showed out. And we know for many of you, it's a no-brainer. You have a covenantal relationship with United. And yet some of you are still working on this a little bit and you need a little bit of encouragement. You need a little bit of push on the spiritual journey. Through the Bible, God has stressed to the Israelites giving your first fruit is important. Not your leftovers, not your second thoughts, not after you've paid all your bills, not your excuses, not apathy, but amazingly your very first fruit. I remember when I was listening to a pastor a long time ago say that the first check you write when you get paid is your tithe, your offering. And what a difference it made in my life. I found I struggled before. I was looking at all the bills I owed and how little I made, but when I made that first check, 
my offering my tithes, I never fell short of my commitment. I love it now because we have direct payment and I'm signed up. So when I get paid, yee, they yank it right out. Right there the next day, I get paid on this day and the next day before I can do anything, I've signed up and committed. Take it. And it really works. Your first fruit. I wonder how we can implement that in our lives, that our first fruit, that first blessing, the ways in which we were blessed. We do it out of covenantal relationship. So many times we've read this summer about God declaring to the Israelites, I am the Lord your God that brought you out of Egypt. I think if I don't forget anything else in the Bible this year, I'm going to remember that one. I am the Lord your God that brought you out of Egypt. Don't forget what I've done for you people. In a lot of ways, the behavior and conduct to the Israelites and their God is foreign to us. I know as you were listening this morning about slaughter and killing and sacrifice, it was a bit much at times. All that sacrifice and killing and animals and blood, that's years away from us. There's a lot of years and a lot of evolution that's happened since the Bible days. Humans have evolved, but relationships have always been something that was important to God. They've always been something that God was big on. This bond and connection and sense of accountability that exists between God and the community of faith. So I began today talking about a professor who was walking her tall dogs. And she came upon three teen girls that were using a lot of profanity. And when they saw the dogs, they had some more profanity to add. This professor had no relationship with the kids. Her heart might have been in the right place but she had no connection with them. I have seen others make that mistake as well, remembering what life was like for them when they embarked to say something to somebody without, without a relationship. It makes a big difference when you've taken the time to invest and build relationship. When you've taken the time for someone to know that you have their best interests. One of the gifts that God offers God's people in connection, he offers them relationship. When you have relationship, there's a lot more you can say. God would get mad and Moses would have to come. God down, Moses would get mad, break the tablets, and God would have to calm Moses down, but they always came back. Isn't that the way it is with us sometimes? We get mad with our friends, might not talk to them for a while. But then we eventually, we eventually, hopefully, <laughs> come back. And they repeated this bumpy road over and over again. But they always came back to the covenantal relationship, even through the prophets, the big prophets, the small prophets, exile. They always came back to that covenantal relationship that they had with God. These are still our people. And it's through the building of a relationship with those who are most different from us that we can affect change. It is through relationship building with those that sit on our steps that we can affect change. It is through relationship building in our community with people that are strangers that we can speak and affect change. It is through relationship with people that are on the margins, whether it's by class or education, race, or all of the above, that we can affect change. So the next time you want to walk up on somebody or approach someone, you might want to think about what kind of relationship do I have with them. You might want to even take the time to build and invest in that relationship. Because you could affect change, or you could get cursed out. The covenant that God had with God's people was built on steadfast, 
steadfast, committed covenantal relationship. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you that just like the Israelites, you stay with us, that you stay connected, that you are the God of second and third and fourth chances. No matter how frustrated you get with us, you come back. And we thank you that you model for us what covenant and relationship is all about. Help us, Lord, to be in covenantal relationship with each other. But more importantly, help us to be in covenantal relationship in our community and in our world so that we can live out the mission of this church. We thank you for these seasons. We thank you for the covenant. We thank you for Jesus Christ, and we thank you for each other. Amen. <laughs>